Welcome back, everybody. Now, we've had a chance to take a look at how states are fighting back against the ESG movement with their legislatures, with their governor. Now we're going to turn to the private sector and take a look at the efforts there to push back against this extraordinary movement. Joining us right now is Andrew Puzder. He is the author of The Capitalist Comeback, one of the great books. It was back in 2018, still relevant today. He's also best known for turning around Carl's Jr. and Hardy's restaurants when he was their CEO. Andrew, great to have you on the show today. Uh, great to be here, John. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's an honor. People are fascinated what you've done. You've gone into the free market and you've created an anti-ESG exchange traded fund. Actually, a series of them. Tell us a little bit what motivated you and what the reaction's been in the marketplace. Actually, Dave and Diane Black started this. Dave was a uh, uh, was an entrepreneur, started a medical testing company, did very well. Diane, his wife, was the um, chairman of the House Budget Committee that got the Trump tax cut through. So good, good people. Uh, they, they started a rating service back about 10 years ago that ranked companies on a scale of one to five, uh, from very liberal to very conservative, uh, so that consumers would know what companies to, uh, to shop at and where to put their loyalties. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, they decided to, in effect, monetize that system and come out with products so that people could invest consistent with their values. You know, we're, we're really in a at a point in time where, where conservatives can't do business, they can't invest, they can't even contribute to charities as they used to uh, because a group of uh, misguided elites uh, has, has, uh, that, that are advancing a, what's called ESG, an ESG form in, of investing, which is really a neo-Marxist form of investing. And they've kind of taken over the financial sector so that the companies we used to trust uh, to act as prudent investors with our funds are no longer doing so. Uh, we certainly never expected them to act as political activists or as leftist crusaders. So we came up with a few products, one of which is called Shareholders First. And it's an index we have that only uh, invests in companies that are rated neutral on that one to five scale, liberal to conservative. So they're, they're companies that don't pursue political objectives. ESG investing is all about accomplishing liberal political objectives. But the right objective is to concentrate on returns for investors, returns for shareholders. And our theory is that companies that focus on profits rather than politics are going to be more profitable than companies that focus on politics rather than profits. So we put profits over politics and our shareholders first index, which has done very well, uh, is, uh, is the result of that, uh, of, of that process. What, what an amazing idea. Companies focusing on their bottom line, their services, their products, and their customers. That used to be the way things were. Um, what's happened in the boardrooms? What has happened to these CEOs and chairmen that they allow their companies to get dragged into political uh, uh, debates that have nothing to do with their products, their customers, uh, or, or what they're paid to do? Well, there's probably a couple explanations for it. One is that they're true believers. I mean, if you look at Disney and what Disney has done to its business, uh, you know, here's a company that's supposed to be appealing to women, kids, and families, and they're out there making a big deal, objecting to a bill that says you can't teach kids uh, uh, about sex before the third grade. I mean, I, you know, how, how on earth is that consistent with their uh, with their financial objectives? And you see, you see this company, you know, they take a tremendous hit to their stock. I mean, it went down significantly, and it's not because they have bad theme parks; they have good theme parks. It's because they take these political positions, which they really didn't need to take. I think a more a more impactful thing than just CEOs being true believers is the pressure that that is placed on these CEOs by these huge, huge financial firms uh, that invest billions and billions of dollars in other people's money, such as BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard. Those three firms alone manage about $22 trillion in assets. That's, that's wow. more than the annual GDP in the United States. This is an, an amazing amount of stock. And in fact, if you add their shareholdings together, they are the largest shareholder in 80% of the companies in the S&P 500. If you just look at BlackRock alone, and BlackRock's really become the, you know, the poster uh, ESG company out there. If you just look at them alone, they manage about $10, $11 trillion in assets. And they are the first, second, or third largest shareholder in 80% of the companies in the S&P 500. And they vote those shares uh, you know, very vigorously to accomplish these leftist uh, socialist goals, such as net zero carbon emissions, critical race theory, HR policies, that's the S and ESG social, uh, or governance policies that put people 
on boards of directors based solely on their race or their sex, not their qualifications, right. not their merits, not their character, but just race and sex, which, by the way, is something I fought against my whole career. I don't know how this became the in thing to do. In any event, BlackRock votes its shares in favor of these policies. And if, for example, in Exxon, we saw a, uh, a, a very small hedge fund that owned very little Exxon stock uh, moved to put some environmentalists on Exxon's board. That's right. They wanted to put environmentalists on the largest American you know, fossil fuel company, largest American oil producer, uh, and the largest oil producer in Texas. And, uh, and with BlackRock's votes and Vanguard's votes, they actually successfully put these environmentalists on the board. So they use their voting power uh, to, to affect who's on the board. And then they meet with the, the management of these companies and they say, look, you know, if you don't follow these ESG policies, you know, you may have a problem like Exxon did. You may find out that, that we're voting in your, in your election against your directors, uh, which obviously is going to have an impact on management of those companies. And then uh, you, you have to keep in mind that uh, CEOs are always uh, rewarded. They're always encouraged to see their stock go up. And if BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard, if they buy your stock, even if you're underperforming, your stock's going to go up because they create huge demand for stock. If they dump your stock, even if you're underperforming, your stock will go down. So these, these financial firms have yeah. incredible power when it comes to directing the policies and the initiatives at, uh, at American private sector companies, and they're using it. It's been very effective. Yeah, the CEOs are often in a, between a rock and a hard place. We've got about 45 yeah. seconds left. Just real quickly, Whole Foods CEO, departing CEO John Mackey, said the other day, the socialists are taking over corporate America. What's your thought on his sentiments there? Well, he, he was talking about ESG investing. If you read, if you read yeah. John's statement in total, he's talking about uh, these CEOs being pressured to do what the left wants them to do. Elon Musk came out and said that he was convinced ESG was the devil incarnate. I mean, the, the, the CEOs will tell you that this is an evil, terrible thing, and they're being forced to focus on things other than the interests of their investors and shareholders, and that's going to destroy our economy. That, that socialism in sheep's clothing, uh, there's just no doubt about it. Yeah, well, thank God you've started some efforts now to push back, and of course, your book was a great harbinger of things to come. Andrew Fizer, what an honor to have you on the show today. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, John. A pleasure to be here. And by the way, we have two ETFs people can purchase publicly. One's a uh, pro-life ETF, L-Y-F-E, and the other is a civil safe society ETF. It goes against things like defunding the police and open borders, and that's E-G-I-S, and both of those are available publicly. You know, you can, anybody can buy them on Ameritrade or Charles Schwab or whatever you use. It's pretty exciting, a whole new parallel economy being born before our eyes. Great stuff. Good to have you on today, Andrew. Thanks so much. John, pleasure to be here. Yeah, you as well. All right, folks, uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, the state treasurer from West Virginia, who has been fighting uh, using the state powers to get corporations to either stop uh, their attacks on energy or leave the state. We'll be right back with that story after this commercial break.